at the outset there might be some formatting errors because I, when i was looking from the macbook to the microsoft so please spare me for that so uh, as you know that antibiotics are one of the most commonly prescribed medications both in adults and children i would say but uh, as compared to adults there are very few literatures these antibiotics are very uh, uh, there are few studies which have actually studied it pediatric population despite that the antimicrobial remains still remains the most uh, frequently prescribed uh, drugs most antimicrobials are safe in children however one should remember that the children are not small adults there are various different factors that we will be seeing in the coming slide what can which can affect the drug distribution and drug metabolism in children so there are unique peculiarities of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics in children and because uh, the dose is not standardized we have to calculate according to the age and weight of the child they are more prone for errors so what are the common issues when you uh, prescribe an antimicrobial in a child so it depends upon age the growth and the developmental stage of the child or uh, these are the two main factors which affect the pharmacokinetics of a antimicrobial in children specifically the absorption distribution metabolism and excretion dosages are frequently based on body surface area or weight and there is an increased toxicity from certain drugs in children for example the ceftriaxone and fluoroquinolone and there are differences in various organ function primarily because of maturity of that organ system and the way that uh, the that organ handles the drugs and according to various disease states also so we'll see one by one Uh, about the pharmacokinetics i think uh, this topic has been covered uh, must be covered uh, previously also uh, for in general so pharmacokinetic as we know is what the body does to the drugs and pharmacodynamic is what the drug does to the body so there are four things absorption distribution metabolism and excretion so absorption coming to the absorption there are many host factors which determines uh, the absorption of the drug in the body so these these are the main uh, things which are the gastric acid secretion the bile salt pool the emptying time and the intestinal motility the surface area which is available for absorption and the bacterial colonization of git and the presence and extent of the underlying disease so what happens in children is that uh, if if you see the neonate these factors are reduced because of primarily because of maturity but in children they are variably affected uh, affected and that we can see in the subsequent slides so uh, the gastric acid secretion is less as compared to adults in children and this leads to increased bioavailability of the uh, this can affect the bioavailability of many drugs specifically the acid labile drugs their bioavailability will be increased and those who are weakly acidic or basic drugs their bioavailability will be decreased uh also the size of bile salt pool is also decreased so there is a decreased bioavailability of lipophilic drugs as well in children the gastric emptying time intestinal motility also decreases and also the surface area available for of intestine for absorption is also reduced so this affects the time to reach the therapeutic concentration and absorption and uh, specifically if the, we have a congenital atrophic bowel or sometimes the sur- we we have to do surgery and remove a part of bowel can lead to specific absorptive defects so all these things to be considered when you calculate the dosage of the uh, antimicrobials in children the next is about the distribution so volume of di- distribution also varies with age as we know that the, there are changes in bo- total body water and relative size or weight of organ as the child grows uh and also it depends upon your plasma protein bindings there are also other factors like membrane permeability local blood flow and hemodynamic factors uh, but the two important thing is the total body water and the plasma protein binding so the total body water as we know uh, uh, varies from 80% in a premature 2 kilo child to 60% in an adult of 70 kilo adult so uh, uh, because the total body water is more at the lower uh, as the age decreases the uh, there will be requirement of higher do- dose of water soluble antimicrobials at younger age and uh, dose decreases as the age increases also the body surface area is more uh, in child as compared to adult so uh, that will also affect your drug dosage calculation the second important thing is the plasma protein binding 
So there are three principal proteins which bind uh, most commonly used antibiotics. And these include albumin, alpha-1 acid, glycoprotein, and lipoprotein. So uh, these concentrations are lower in infants, and it reaches the adult value at the age of one year. And uh, other thing is the basic drugs uh, bind all three proteins, and neutral and acidic drugs only bind the albumin. And it also depends upon the concentration of proteins which is present in the, your body, the affinity of the, that protein to your drugs, and the physiological condition of the patient. There are other many other factors which compete for plasma protein binding sites. For example, uh, bilirubin and free acid acid compete for albumin binding, and this weakens the bilirubin albumin binding in neonates, and it reaches the adult level at five months of age. The classic example is like use of ceftriaxone and cefepirazone sulfonamide increase the free bilirubin in newborns. This is basically because they compete for albumin binding sites uh, in the newborns. For the metabolism part, the drug metabolism is lower in neonates than in older infants and children, and liver is the principal organ system. So there are two types, as we know that uh, the biotransformation of any drug uses the cytochrome P450 enzyme phases, like phase one includes oxidation reduction and hydrolysis, and phase two is uh, enhancement of drug excretion by conjugation with sulfate or glucuronide. So these systems are variable maturity uh, are mature at variable time of development so phase one activity is reduced in neonates and rises in first six months and exceeds also first few years then slow down during adolescence and reaches the adult rate only at the late puberty the phase two is the sulfation is well developed in infants but glucuronization is underdeveloped so these things also to be taken into consideration then about the elimination, excretion occurs through kidney and bile, but it again depends on various factors, mainly the renal blood flow, glomerular filtration rate. And these all are altered in first two years of life. So as we know that the renal blood flow is low at birth and it reaches adult value at one year of age. Similarly for the GFR, it is low at birth around two to four ml per minute and it reaches the adult level of 120 ml per minute by three to five months of age. So all these factors will affect the drug concentration in your body. Uh, so the drug dosing is mainly a practical point because we cannot consider each and every factor. Uh, that would be an ideal situation, but that is practically uh, quite difficult. So most often we use the age or the body weight. So these two things are to be considered. And there are maturational differences that we have already seen. And uh, the ideal way is yeah, you give antimicrobial check the plasma drug concentration, but this is this is not may not be feasible in always may not be feasible in uh, daily routine. So that is the ideal way. So other consideration is uh, we have to know some, certain drugs are toxic, uh, have adverse effects, and uh, can have adverse effect or can have decreased toxicity also. So we have we have to see that, for example, tetracyclines are contraindicated in children below less than ten years. They primarily lead, can lead to teeth abnormalities and bone dysfunction. The fluoroquinolones can cause cartilage abnormalities in young infants. So these two uh, drugs are more, there are many other drugs, but then we have to see whether safety profile as well whenever you prescribe. So uh, certain drugs have decreased toxicity. For example, penicillin are uh, prone to anaphylactic reactions uh, in older population, but there's a decreased re anaphylactic reaction to penicillin. So the, some of the, these things has to be taken, safety profile of the drug has to be taken into consideration. One important other factor is the oral administration versus IV administration. So certain drugs are less bioavailable when given orally in children, for example, penicillin, uh, but certain drugs have good absorption like septran and lenozolid. The other major important is the palatability because it is, it is a major issue in children because uh, children uh, will just spit out whatever the drugs have been given. So they have been, the drugs have been formulated with special flavors. So this, this is a very also important consideration when you give an oral drug to a child. IV administration is, uh, uh, which is, uh, it is useful specifically in smaller newborn babies because we do not know how much is the oral absorption and whether it is occurring properly or not in newborns. So nobody can predict that. So it is better if the child uh, baby is very sick, then IV administration to be given uh, because it, the, it is faster to reach the site of action and it also depends upon the infusion rate and other uh, like dead space of infusion rate and all that thing. 
Intramuscular sites commonly used in children, but uh, you have to also see there can be erratic absorption and can be unpredictable because of reduced muscle mass, poor perfusion to various muscles and peripheral vasomotor instability and insufficient muscle contraction. Percutaneous absorption, uh, topical antimicrobials or antifungals are uh, very frequently uh, prescribed, uh, but you have to consider in children because of underdeveloped epidermal barriers uh, that is the statum corneum and increased hydration. There is an increased absorption of these topical drugs uh, uh, when applied to the skin. Specifically, in newborns and premature, they will be just get absorbed from the body if, even if you apply on the skin. So we have to consider that also. Also, the total body surface area is more in smaller children as compared to adults. So these two factors affect the percutaneous absorption of topical antibacterials. Uh, drug interactions. There are many uh, drug combinations that to be avoided because of these enzymes interacting with each other. I will not go into details, but just for example, erythromycin and fluconazole when given with cisapride have a toxic effect. And uh, this combination of erythromycin, theophylline, chloramphenicol, or phenytoin is also to be avoided. Then coming to the pharmacodynamics, uh, it is the drugs what, uh, what does do the body. It includes effects, activity, and toxicity of drug within the body. So there are two types, uh, as you must have been uh, taught before, time-dependent killing and authored. That is done. So I think I will come. So this is more all the same things. So coming to the last uh, part, like what are the common infections, common organism, and uh, antimicrobial of the choice. So acute hepatitis media, uh, if uh, the infection is like ear infection is commonly seen, the commonest organism. Now these are only, I'm talking about the community acquired part, not the hospital acquired one. So the community acquired is most commonly streptomony followed by H. influenzae and other drugs, other organisms. The drug of choice is amoxicablon or ceftriaxone or any microlytes can also be uh, tried. So these are the drug of choice. Then acute pharyngitis or tonsillitis, group A streptococcus followed by H. influenzae. So penicillin V, amaxiclav, or amoxicillin, plain amoxicillin is enough, or benzathin penicillin G. In case of penicillin allergy, then you can try erythromycin, erythromycin, or first generation cephalopurin, or clindamycin as well. For urinary tract infection, E. coli is the most common organism, followed by Klebsiella, Proteus, and Pseudomonas. Uh, the third generation cephalosporin and aminoglycosides and co amaxiclav are the antimicrobials of choice. For cellulitis, in children, streptococcal uh, and, uh, is the most common organism. Uh, again, the choice is the cephalosporin group of drugs, erythromycin or benzyl penicillin. For community acquired pneumonia, the common organisms are again different according to age. But for older children, like more than five, uh, five years, pneumococcal and H. influenzae, uh, for more than uh, two months of age, pneumococcal, H. influenzae, and staph aureus are the common ones. So in this case, again, the, still the drug of choice is penicillin, cephalosporin, and macrolide. Uh, Septran is a good drug, but it may not be uh, readily available uh, oral the oral preparation. For severe form, you, obviously, if the child is admitted and severe pneumonia, you need to give IV only. For bacterial meningitis, for older children, uh, from three months, uh, the streptococcus pneumonia and, H, and meningitis and H. influenzae are the commonest. Again, the third generation cephalosporins are the common uh, uh, antimicrobial to be used. Then coming to the enteric fever, uh, staph is, uh, Salmonella typhi is the most common organism, third generation cephalosporin or fluoroclonella. For osteomyelitis, staph is again the more common, so you should consider cloxacillin plus evotaxin, and uh, maybe the third generation cephalosporin can be added. The peritonitis, uh, streptonomony, streptococci, group A streptococci, and gram-negative bacilli. So, cefotaxim and aminoglycosid may be added. And if you suspect staph also, then vanco may be added. So, I think these are the common infections. If you have any queries. 